Hi, I'm Kej. Um, I have been working as an English language teacher for about five years. I've always wanted to take some videos to help people who want to improve their English language skills. And I'm planning to take some videos to share some thoughts with you about grammar, about vocabulary, and uh, um, to share some tips about speaking. Um, so the first one will be about conditionals, as you see. And I want to say that there are five types of conditionals. There are uh, third conditional, first conditional, second, third, and mixed conditional. I'm going to take one video for each of them and I'm starting to speak about the conditional in detail. Okay, let's start to speak about the conditional. I want to say that all conditional sentences consist of two parts, it clause and main clause. It clause is also called a conditional clause. And uh, here in zero conditional, we use present simple tense form in if clause and present simple tense form in main clause as well. And we usually use zero conditional if we want to speak about our habits or something that usually happens to us in our daily life or about scientific facts. I have written three sample sentences for you. Let's read them together. The first one, if I feel sad, I always watch friends. As you see, I have underlined verbs that I have used in this sentence. Feel and watch, they both are present simple verbs. And here I'm speaking about my habit. It's a habit for me, whenever I feel sad, I like uh, watch friends and it makes me feel better. And the second sentence is, the bus is usually late if I leave home early. It's also called the Murphy Law, so like we try to do something better, but always uh, bad things happen to us, they always follow us. You see is, which is a present simple form of to be, and leave a present simple verb again, uh, and it is about um, a case question that usually happens to us. And again, I'm using a conditional sentence here. And the third one, which is about the scientific fact, if you heat water to 100 degrees, it boils. Again, heat and boils, which are present simple verbs. The last thing that I'd like to mention about the conditional is, um, if you or when you use if clause at the beginning of a sentence, you should use comma before many clause. But it's okay to select their places. You can use uh, main clause at the beginning of the sentence too. But when we use main clause at the beginning of the sentence, we do not use comma before if clause or between clauses. So I want to say that it's a bit different from zero conditional. If you remember, in zero conditional, we used to use uh, present simple in both clauses, but unlike zero conditional, we have to use will plus base infinitive in first condition, but it's the same about uh, if clause, we use present simple in if clause as it was in zero conditional. But what about the use? When we should use the uh, first conditional, when we speak about possible future action, Possible uh, means like if something happens, it's possible, like a future action is possible to happen in the future. So we will see a result or a um, consequence of an action in the future. So I've written again three sample sentences for you about first conditional. Let's read them. If she writes to me, I will call you. As you see, if close. We have used, I have used like present simple if close and we use will plus base infinitive in main close. Again, we want, want is a contracted form of will not. We want go camping if it rains. Again, will plus base infinitive and in if close we have used present simple tense form. If he studies hard tonight, he will pass the exam. Again, studies present simple tense form and will plus base infinitive. So they will all possibly happen in the future and we will see their consequences. Now it's turn for second conditional. So let's speak about tense form that we have to use in if clause and in main clause. If it is if clause, we should use past simple, not present simple. And in main clause, we should use would plus base infinitive or sometimes could plus base infinitive, both are possible. What about the use of second conditional, when I should use second conditional? If I speak about imaginary or hypothetical situation in the future, or if I speak about something which sounds impossible to happen. So that's why I have written imaginary, impossible, future. I want to underline this word because it might be a bit confusing for students 
as we use past simple and past, uh, past like tenses of feel and can, they mostly think that it's about past. No, it's about future. We use our imagination to think about future. So let's uh, read or pay attention to these three sample sentences. The first one, if I had more money, I would help her. So had, which is a past simple version of have, and I have used would plus base infinitive. So here I use my imagination. I don't have enough money to help uh, that person, but I use my imagination. If I had money, I would help. The second one, if I could fly, I would travel to Italy. Could, which is a past simple version of can and would plus base infinitive. So it is something that sounds impossible to happen in the future. As a human being, we can't fly. We do not have wings. That's why it's impossible future. And the last one, if I was a bit taller, I could be a basketball player. So I'm not tall enough to be a basketball player, but uh, it's my wish. That's why like, uh, I use my imagina imagination and I say if I was, which is a past simple formal to be, and could, I have used could instead of would here, could be a basketball player. And there is one interesting point about second conditional. I want to speak about it. Um, so I said we use if clause plus past simple and may clause would or could plus base infinitive. But there is one case, if I want to use to be, in second conditional and in if clause, of course I need past simple versions of to be. What are they? To be. We know that it has two forms in past simple, was and were. Was is used with I, he, she, it and with singular nouns, but were is used with you, we, they and with plural nouns. But there is one case, one situation that we use were with all subject, with all of these subjects. When uh, we want to say that, like, when we speak about being in one's place or being in one's shoes, which is an idiomatic phrase, uh, for example, if I were you means if I uh, was in your situation, if I were in your situation. So if I were you, I wouldn't invite her. Or uh, if she were me, like, in general, we should use was with I, she, and he, but I have used were with all of them because all sentences gives, uh, give us this meaning. So if she were me, she would solve it. Or if she were us, he, I'm sorry, if he were us, he would accept that. And we are going to speak about third conditional, which is the fourth type of conditional sentences. Let's speak about its formula. So we should use past perfect tense form in if clause and in main clause we should use would plus have plus verb 3 or with the second name past participle. And we use it when we want to speak, when we want to say how things could have been different in the past. Don't forget, it's about past. And both actions in if clause and in main clause happened or didn't happen in the past. It is usually about our regrets. We regret what we didn't do or what we did in the past and its consequence, its result in the past. Again, everything happened or didn't happen in the past. Uh, let's pay attention to our sample sentences. If I had known it before, I wouldn't have invited her. So I didn't know that, that's why I invited her. But if I had known, so things could have been different in the past. Or secondly, if she had told me, I would have helped her. Uh, we don't just use would in third conditional, but we can also use could or might. These two models are used when we are not sure about the uh, consequence, about the result of past action. We are less certain about that. So, I might not have come if he had invited me. He didn't invite me in the past, so I didn't go there. In mixed conditional, uh, in if clause, we should use past perfect as it was in third conditional. But unlike third conditional, we don't use uh, would plus have plus verb three, but would plus base infinitive. If you remember, we used to use would plus, we should use would plus base infinitive in second conditional too. It's kind of mix of second conditional, third conditional, like it has taken this part from third condition and this part from second conditional. But when I should, when I can use uh, mixed conditional, 
If you speak about a past action, something happened in the past, but it has a result in the present, or something didn't happen in the past, so there is a result in the present. Or when we speak about regrets, regrets are things that we did or we didn't do in the past, that's why we have a different life, we have a different condition now in the present. Uh, for example, I would earn more money if I had studied abroad. So it's past action and we see its present result. I didn't study in, the, uh, in a foreign country, that's why I can't earn uh, as much as money I wish. Or uh, if you had warned me about traffic jam, I wouldn't be late. My colleague didn't inform me about traffic jam, how um, heavy it was, and uh, that's why I was late. Well, I am late for my work. So she didn't or he didn't inform me in the past. As a result, in the present, I am late for my work. That's all about conditionals. I hope it helped you. I hope you learned something about conditionals and you will be able to use them in a proper place in your speaking. Have a nice day. See you.